I want you to, we're going to break down um, part of sprint mechanics right now, okay? Arm action. So right now, first do this with your hands. Right angle, okay? One arm's right angle, other arm's right angle. So slow, we're just going to move slowly right now. So there's multiple different components of sprint mechanics. Arm action is a super important one. Sometimes I notice you flare a little bit. I'm not going to change your mechanics too much. I'm just going to refine them. That's all I'm going to do. Even slower. Yep, good. Boom, boom, quick. When we're teaching people how to sprint, we've got to teach them the mechanics of how to deaccelerate and slow down. If you don't know how to land, it's like, how are you going to land a plane without no, uh, without no, what do they call them? Landing, ge landing gears, the landing wheels, those things. Anyway, what do you call them? No, on planes. Deaccelerating, chop your feet and then hold in this half half squat position, okay? Exactly, 90%. Three things in sprinting mechanics that we talk about. Posture, arm action, leg action. Her posture is pretty upright. So we're gonna work on trying to get that 45 degree angle. Besides getting even lower from the start, punching out and maintaining that 45 degree angle um, for the first couple of meters. All right, let's just have another look. I want you to start this time. One thing we do, especially a little thought about juniors, is to promote this really good angle, we start them on the ground. So I want you to start on your stomach. This is not, no, this is not uh, how she's gonna do it in competition. You, man, you wish. You wish you could pull that off. He wishes he could pull that off. Man, it's called a, all in America, he's, he, he's been to America. They tucked all, all they the, time. the time. You know this one's a pro, I like this for a pro to start. The reason, no, please, no, good. Oh, I actually like a pro to start, because it's gonna come over for acceleration because you actually can't over stride. Where I actually learned this to off um, Joe Franco when I was in Texas, where you actually in a pro position, it's impossible to over stride. So, you, so you're actually not breaching and it puts you in that nice acceleration position we want that steep forward lean and that violent arm drop. So it's that perfect acceleration position, positive shit able to apply force down the back of So, so I'm trying to get her into that 45 degree angle because yeah, she's pretty she's upright. No yeah. You know what it is? Gymnasts, they run upright. Yeah. 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 No idea. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, acceleration is terrible. Is there anything else you'd recommend? Uh, yeah, I'd heavy ass leg drags to put her in the position. Yeah. Crowd push it. She has got no idea about the position. She's only used to running up one track. That's how they run. Yeah. That pole. So sled drags with the prowler? Heavy ass, no, heavy ass sled drags. Go get those, go get the things. Be heavy enough. It's got to be heavy enough to put in that position, but um, not heavy enough where she's actually not getting the triple extension. And yeah. It's more cerebral in nature. What I mean by that, it's slower. It's not about, it's more developing a, a pattern within the nervous system to understand that position. Steep 45 degree lean, position in, triple extension on the back leg. God, I sound smart now, right now. Yeah. Right? Down the back of the ground. That's probably going to be too heavy for her. Oh, yeah, you think? Yeah, but we'll see how you go. I'm upset. Oh, you have that. You want to lean on to it, just hold it, okay? Lean on to it, just hold it. Okay, before you pull, just get into that steep lean. Yeah, good. Now drive that knee forward. I want that foot to fall under your hip. Good. Nice. This is exactly what it's doing. Knees driving forward. She's on that 45 degree angle. Glutes are on, full posterior training, he's applying force to the ground. Good. How does that feel? Yeah. Go. You can see she's pretty slow to get off the ground. She's putting that, that steep 45 degree lean because the adaptation is task specific to the muscle group, motor pattern, joint angle, contraction type, contraction velocity, metabolic pattern. Everything's specific. The way you train affects how you adapt, right? The closer the training task, the motor skill, the greater transference. So for you, your specialized training, now the best way you can train for this is through the fucking course. But beyond that, you need to do your physical prep so you maximize your potential on the course, which is your out strength, which is your grip strength, which is your positioning as well. Do you like how I did that? That was great. Well, this, you can I'm add learning right now. Well, that, that's for this program, I've gotten so many people's different perspectives on it. Christian, Jay Ellis, Jordan Potts, Joe DeFranco, who I got, um, who people who watch a podcast, I asked a question about this training on his podcast. He answered it. So shout out to DeFranco. She doesn't know yet. She doesn't even know who he is. But for those who know, got the Joe DeFranco stick of approval because everything he said pretty much, I'm incorporating in the program. I'll put a link somewhere on the screen. Alex and Dallas asks, if you were to prepare someone to win a competition, 
and your Jesus and your life was on the line. Well, I, I hope not. <laughs> what would you do to maximize success? First and foremost, you relative strength is number one. You need to get her as strong as humanly possible while keeping her weight as light as humanly possible. All right, that's number one. And then the type of strength, obviously, grip strength. Like, if you see this program, we're slowly working down that force velocity curve, dropping down rep by rep every two weeks. So now we're on to five. Last, last two weeks we're on to si on six. Next two weeks we'll be on four. All right. I want. Very good. Now the, <laughs> the student becomes the teacher. Please. Shoulder dis uh, band dislocates, band pull apart, super important. A dip will really load your deltoid. If you're not warmed up properly, you're not mobilized up properly, you increase your risk for, for injury. Is I'm gonna pick your back legs up, put you on a little bit more of an angle so you can lean into it more, okay? The reason we do this, if we keep her upright, shoulder joint, the scapula isn't moving, isn't upwardly rotating properly and elevating properly. If I put her on an angle, I can get her scapula and shoulder moving in a much better range of motion, much healthier for our shoulders. Learned that from Jay Ellis. Press through, the, press through the bars. And for people wondering why are we doing dips? Dips are usually like a bodybuilding movement because I, th I think about the position she's gonna be in. A dip is a part of a uh, muscle up and while we're not doing muscle ups right now, it's a super important ab the ability to be able to press your body weight in, in, such, in just a 90 degrees of elbow flexion is relative to the competition that I believe that we're gonna do. Ordinarily, she's been squatting with shoes on in her gym. I've told her recently to take shoes and socks off so you can feel the floor. We've got a high degree of proprioceptors in our feet. We want to feel the floor. You can apply more force to the ground that way. Shoes will dissipate force. Barefoot will apply force. This looks so weird. Yeah. <laughs> looks so wrong. <laughs> looks so weird. Well, you you got to go in. you got to jump the ball. <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> oh, God. It is so wrong. Just zoom in on that chin. I want you to give me feedback on what feels more powerful, foot to the side or foot behind you. No? Or no? oh, you can already tell? Yeah. And that's powerful? Yeah. So that's a great example. I feel like you have to work more in your adductors. adductors. Right. In this, my, my adductors are quite weak. Okay. In this position, whereas there's... Yes. Okay. Well, I want to find the variation that she can apply the mo most force to the ground using one leg because she's going to be in positions in competition where she's going to have to jump off one leg and land on one leg and apply force to the ground with one leg and she needs to be strong. Sorry, I talk a little fast there. Sorry, I sorry, sorry. I, was, I saw Shaz's face in the background. I'm, like, I'm talking really quick, aren't I? I'm like, yes. But I'm just trying to get it out. Tow chin-ups. And as you can see... Uh, and that wouldn't have worked. So this towel is not appropriate for towel chin-ups. We have to finally just hang. This is good. This is good to test psychologically. Be be <laughs> no, you got it. You got it. This is a good test psychologically. Because she's only... There's no injury will happen here. Hold. 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 Eyes forward. Hold. Why'd you let go? This is super psychological. So I purposely gave her a dodgy towel. Right? So I can, I can get her confident with risky things. <laughs> even though she's two inches off the ground. Am I doing it again? Yes. I'm amazed by, by those, those courses. I would, some of them I watch, I think I have a pretty good idea of what you know, human beings are capable of. I, I think I have a pretty good knack of pushing people like right to their limit, but I, but I know what they're physically capable of and like what's just not possible. Some of those courses I would deem impossible, like there's just no way that your grip and hand strength could last that long. I would do every variation of a pull-up imaginable, grip strength, uh, you know, various thick, thick handled chin-ups, pull-ups, rowing, you know, that that's the key. You know, core strength, which you're gonna get with all those crazy pull-up variations. What we're gonna do is some balance work as well. So, getting working on proprioception, getting her more comfortable with one leg holds. She's gonna be in different compromising positions where she has to hold on one leg, okay? So, you have the rack here as guidance. What I want you to do is first just hold, 
just a couple of seconds, eyes open, then I want you to close your eyes and see how long you can hold with your eyes closed. And then just close your eyes. Really simple in nature, but it does not take long for someone to lose their balance. And you can see the knee come. Look at that. What was that, six seconds? Yeah. I have to really this. So, this really exposes someone's ankle mobility, knee stability, hip stability. So as a progression, if you want to improve someone's single leg hold, add in different senses, like try and noise, stimulus. People feel when you're near them. See, she feels that. That's a progression though. Right now I wouldn't do that. So I'm not going to throw everything at her in the one movement. And look at it, challenges her. It has to humble her. That's, she's so good at doing pretty much everything. Pretty much everything she tries, she's pretty decent at from the start. So to find something that, that challenges her, what did she just say? No, please don't hurt your other foot. And it forces you, actually, the mental side of this is super important. It forces you to be completely present in the moment. You have to focus on the task at hand. You can't worry about what's happening when you get home, what's happening yesterday. Right? And then we progress as we can do so many different things like this. She hold it out, hold it out, hold it out. You can see again, real sloppy, just you rest in that kettlebell on your on your thigh there. That's when handles probably I'm I want to test, right? Handles probably much better for us. Yeah. It, do, it feels a bit more natural, the movement, that just feels a bit... You should apply force back in into the ground, feet under your hips. Nice. Get it to the end, and we've got a minute rest. Now, I always want to make sure we ask where the individual feels it. Where are they fatiguing? She's feeling in her quads. I want to see, because everyone's going to be different. No movement is going to apply the exact same stress to, the exa to different people. Someone is going to say a really weird thing one time. They're going to say, oh, I feel it in my arm. Um, hand or scalp or some weird, I don't know, they, they get, someone's going to say something weird and you're like, oh, something's wrong here, let's adjust. Minute rest in between rounds, so we're just focusing on position, applying force back and into the ground, feet falling under her hips, keeping that really good angle, and she's going to go all the way up and all the way back. People are sitting at home having a nice tea, having a nice dinner, their family and friends or a TV and a dog, no, we're here working. Put the camera on me. We're working. I just want to make sure that's known. She's working. There's nothing more like satisfying than, than the moments right here. Just knowing you're putting in the work. And everyone else is just chill. Yes. I hate conditioning work, yes. but I love it the most because you get the most satisfaction out of it afterwards. <laughs> 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 There's a bit of a weight difference, as you can see. Get some sleep. I will. I hope so. That's awesome. And then we're going to show you guys next week the other program we're walking on, because you guys know we've got four programs. So I'm going to show you another one. Stay tuned for that. Otherwise, week four done. Week five next week. Four weeks to go. Ooh. Four weeks and two days. Oh yeah, because you know the date now. Yeah. That's, it's on. It's on. That's good. That means we had eight, we're going to have eight weeks preparation. Yeah. Instead of seven. Yeah. That's good. So we're literally halfway. halfway. And I already feel stronger. And already more prepared. I've done this before. Good. What we want. It is. <laughs> done. She hurt her ankle doing some back tuck back flip. It's not part of the preparation, it's not in the program. They said it's a potential stress fracture. A potential stress fracture. But you can't Very see because the, the bone is so small, it's hard to pick up a stress fracture on that particular metatarsal. It's such a fine, fine bone, so they said it could show up in six weeks. I'm like, mate.